peace, stress free, let it be. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Ashley, and today we are going to be sewing a fuzzy or like furry bag. Watched a few tutorials on this previously. I'll have them linked down below if you want to go check them out as well. And this looks like a pretty simple project, so it shouldn't take too long. You know those bags that like all those girls on like Pinterest and like Instagram use that are like fluffy and they're kind of long? Yeah, that's what we're making. But I didn't really like those like big like fluffy ones that they had with like a lot of the like faux fur. So I actually went over to the fashion district yesterday and I got this fur. It's super soft and plush. It's like double sided. And then I also got this like satin. It's really cheap. It was on sale and I'm just going to use this for like the lining. As you can see, the fuzzy fabric, I don't know if you can tell, the like fuzzy fabric sheds a lot. I think it's just like where it's cut right here. Um, so this is going to be a messy project, but hopefully not too difficult of a project. This is going to be a pretty quick tutorial slash this is my first time doing it. So kind of a tutorial, kind of me like trying it. This is also my first time working with any kind of like fur fabric or whatever, so this should be interesting. <laughs> so if you feel this video helped you, then give me a thumbs up down below so that I know, or if you just like it, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Also comment down below if you were making one of these fuzzy bags, what color would you make it? And feel free to subscribe to see more videos from me. So as I said, this should be a pretty quick project. Let's get started. So to start off, you're going to need to know what sizes you want to make your bag. You can make them whatever sizes you want. I'm actually going to be making two bags in this video, and these are going to be my sizes of my bag. So this is going to be a little mini like little mini like shoulder bag you know and then this one is gonna be a little bit longer probably just like at my hip area so that's the plan I'm gonna be using these for like size reference when I'm like cutting and everything and yeah let's start cutting so to start I'm just laying out my fabric and creating a fold and then measuring it to where my envelope is so I don't have too much like excess fabric at the top once I get it to where I want it I'm going to cut it we're doing the fold to make it a little bit easier on ourselves just like less sewing and then I'm going to pin it with the wrong sides facing out. So the right sides are facing together. And then I'm just doing the same thing for the smaller envelope as well. Just folding, fitting, and then cutting once I have it to the size that I want it. And again, pinning it with the wrong sides out. And then I'm going to measure how long I want my straps. So for the longer one, I did it about 43 inches, but I went an inch bigger. So I did it actually about like 44 inches. And then for the shorter one, I did about 22 inches. And then I'm just going to lay my fabric out again and measure the length that I want my straps and then also the width. So for the larger one, I did it about four inches wide and 44 inches uh, long. And then to get a straight line, I'm just folding the thing as I go up. And then I'm going to pin it with the right sides together. Again, the wrong sides facing out. And it's gonna look like that, you're gonna have a strip for the smaller one, I did it about three inches wide. I didn't want it as wide. And again, just folding and cutting so that I can get a straight line. And then again, pinning with the right sides together and the wrong sides facing out. And then we're gonna move on to the lining of the purse. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're going to fold it and measure it to the size of the envelope or whatever size you're making your bag. And then pinning it with the right sides facing together and the wrong sides facing out. And we're going to do the same thing for the small one, again, folding, cutting, and pinning. Now that we have everything pinned, we can start sewing. So I'm going to start with the fur fabric, just sewing with a straight stitch down those sides that we pinned only. Don't sew on like the top or anything, just down the two sides. I'm using a straight stitch with my stitch length at about 4, and then also my tension a little bit higher because this fabric is pretty thick, so I have it almost at a five. And I'm just doing the same for the big and the little bag, only sewing on the sides with that straight stitch. And then we're gonna use that same straight stitch to sew down the straps as well. So we're just sewing along where we pinned on the outside so that the two edges are together. Again, the wrong sides are facing outwards, the right sides are faced together. And then when you get to the bottom, you're just gonna want to turn it so that you're working with like the shorter side if that makes sense. And you're gonna wanna sew that together too because that's gonna come in handy when we have to turn this right side out. So we have the stitch on the side and then also this stitch here at the bottom. And we're doing the same thing with the smaller strap as well. Make sure you're being careful because the fur is a little bit slippery for some reason. And so, yeah, it was just kind of hard to work with. 
Uh, and then we're going with the lining and also using a straight stitch down the sides of both of them. I decreased my stitch length though it's about a 2.5 and I also decreased my tension so it's at about a 3 because this is a lot thinner obviously. But same thing, just straight stitches. And then I'm cutting the excess fabric off of the straps just so it's not so bulky. This isn't a necessary step but I wanted to do it because when we turn this right side out it's going to be bulky. So the way that we're going to turn this right side out is we're going to take the chopstick on the part that we sewed on the short part and push it up and then just push all of our fabric down and eventually we can pull it through and don't forget to take the chopstick out very important and i'm just doing the same with the little one so again pushing the chopstick in there and just pushing it all the way up until i can turn it completely right side out now i have this seam here at the bottom which is where i sewed it I'm going to put that at the bottom of the strap and then I'm going to top stitch along both sides of the strap just a little bit off of the edge just to kind of lay it flat. Again, this isn't a necessary step. You really can't even see it. I think it just makes it look better and just, I don't know, just it feels better on your shoulder I guess probably. I don't know, this is my first time doing it. I'm doing the same thing for the long one, just straight stitch down both sides. Again, I'm using the four stitch length and also my tension is at about a five. So now what we're gonna do, this is a very important step. You're gonna take the corners of your lining to start off with and the bottom corner of like the closed, which is gonna be like the bottom of your bag, you're gonna cut at an angle and this is gonna help it be not so bulky when you turn it right side out. So that's what it should look like and I'm just going to do it to the other side as well. So you're just cutting at an angle, I guess going towards your stitch. Make sure you don't cut your stitch though and make sure it's only on the part where it's like closed at the bottom and I'm also doing that to the fur like one as well. So now I'm just going to turn my lining right side out so that the shiny part is outside and push those corners through and I'm going to do it to the other one as well so that I have both of them facing right side out. And then this part can get a little confusing, so I'm gonna go slowly. I'm going to take the lining facing right side out and I'm gonna put it inside of the fur fabric, which is still facing inside out. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your side seams are really lined up together and that it's in there nice and tight and like straight and everything. So then the way that it should be is that the right sides of the lining fabric should be touching the right sides of the fur fabric and the wrong sides of the fur fabric should still be on the outside if that makes any sense. I tried to explain that as best as I could, I'm sorry it's a little bit confusing to explain but it's a lot easier to do than to explain. So then I'm just going to pin the lining and the fur together on both sides so that it's all the way around. You don't want to close the top of your bag, make sure you don't do that but just pin one side of the lining with the one side of the fur that's on the same side. And I'm gonna leave about an inch on each side because I need those to be holes. So on the right and left of the front and back, we're going to leave a hole and we're not gonna sew. And for this, we're just using the straight stitch again and the stitch length is at a four and my tension is at about a five. And we're just gonna go all the way around the front and the back, but again, leaving about an inch on both the right and the left of the front and the back, because then we're going to actually turn the purse right side out through that hole. So you wanna make sure the hole's big enough to get the whole purse through, but it doesn't need to be like gaping, if that makes sense. And then once you have it right side out, it's relatively easy to turn it right side out. Make sure you pop those corners out, and then you can just tuck the lining inside of the bag, and that's what it'll look like. So now you have those holes on the side that you left, you're gonna take the strap, and this is the small strap for mine, and I'm just gonna put it in the hole. And I'm gonna make sure that the rough edges are also tucked in so that they're not like sticking out. And I'm just gonna pin it to hold it in place. We're gonna secure the straps with a top stitch, and we're gonna do the top stitch all the way around the top of the purse. But for now, we just need to get the straps in where they go. Make sure your strap isn't like twisted or anything and also make sure that line that you left when you were top stitching, the middle seam is at the bottom, unless you want it on the top, but I just put mine at the bottom. So once that's secure, I just pinned around it so that I could keep like everything in place for when I top stitch, which it wasn't really necessary, but I didn't know that when I was doing this. And then I'm just going to top stitch pretty close to the edge. What that's going to do is keep your straps nice and secure and also just look really good at the top edge of your purse. 
So when you're top stitching, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your lining is staying down and not like bunching up. I accidentally made that mistake. I'll show you at the end. It's kind of hard to explain what happens, but you can basically just see the lining from the outside. So now I'm just repeating the same thing on the other side. I tucked my lining into my fur and then I'm just sewing the front and back, leaving the right and left open on the front and back so that I have a hole. And then I'm going to turn it right side out, tuck the lining in and then put the strap in there, pin the strap, and get everything ready so that I can top stitch again. Again, you don't need much of a seam allowance when you're top stitching. It's kind of to just help everything lay flat and also to get those straps in there. But once you finish that, you're done. Okay, so here are the final products. This is the little shoulder bag. So cute, so tiny and like a perfect little shoulder bag. And then here is the tote that is a little bit longer or a lot longer, I guess. I think these both came out so cute. The tutorials I watched definitely made it look a lot easier than it actually is. I don't know if it's just like the fabric that I got or whatever, but the like satin lining that I got was really slippery and also the fur was really slippery. So when I was trying to sew it together, it was kind of like moving around. Even though I had it pinned, it was still like moving. I did mess up a little bit on both of them where you can see some of the lining from like the outside, but obviously it's white, so it's not that noticeable, but like I can notice it. But overall, I think they came out super, super cute. I'm really happy with the result in it. And all in all, it was a shorter and easier sewing project than other ones that I've done, but it still wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is so, so cute. I think I would maybe wanna make some more with like different fabrics, but I'm not entirely sure. I mean, a girl only needs so many fluffy bags, right? No, I need all of them. <laughs> but anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you like my bags. If you are making some bags for yourself, good luck. I hope they turn out great. If you end up posting a picture on like Instagram or something with your bags and you use my tutorial to help you make them, then tag me in your picture because I want to see what your bags look like. Seriously, like I want to see how cool they come out. I want to see what different patterns you use and just what cool ideas you all come up with. So thank you all so much again for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up down below or if you found it helpful give me a thumbs up down below be sure to leave a comment about what color fluffy bag you would be making if you were gonna make one hypothetically or if you're actually making one either way and also don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more videos like this and from me all right thank you all so much again for like the third time for watching and i will see you all in my next video bye i need a lint roller so bad <laughs>